so I follow I follow the um, Catholic Traveler, um, and uh, can we get that guy on the show? Yeah, maybe. Well, maybe he'll watch this and he'll, he'll come on. But um, he um, he's really level headed, you know, good guy, uh, and uh, really moderate in his th- in his thinking and his approach and all that. It's great. But he was noticeably physically distraught <laughs> over um, over the banning of of the private masses private masses at um, St. Peter's Basilica. And uh, it just hit me like, you know, this, this is yet another scandal, uh, a scandal to the people of God, uh, to the church of God. Um, it, we didn't want this. Like what, I, I haven't heard any lay person on the street saying, oh yeah, we should ban the private masses at St. Peter's Basilica so that no visiting priests can celebrate there and no visitors can go visit there and celebrate mass. Like, I, I didn't hear that going on in the church. Um, but all of a sudden the private masses are taken away. Danny, <laughs> if I wasn't drinking this coffee right now, I'm telling you, man, I would, I would be sent off. <laughs> so that, so <laughs> it's like it, 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 because so, no saint, no saint before the 1960s would even understand why, like, like, like no saint would even understand the directive. They'd be like, wait, why (laughs) and again and again like and again is this like an attempt to be like academic and say well in the early church they didn't have private masses priests kind of celebrating alone you know is another like move to to be quote-unquote primitive you know like we always say well primitiveness isn't isn't a church Uh, in fact (laughs) john henry newman cardinal newman (laughs) primitiveness is not a church um, so is, is it that, or is it just, I don't know, people at the Vatican got annoyed with masses going on, uh, because, you know, number one, they're not private masses, you know, no mass is ever private. Well, the Catholic and, traveler made that, made that very point. Like, did you see the pictures that he posted of yeah. like those, those private masses? Yeah. Chock full of people. I mean, like there are literally just people piling in, you know, to, yeah. to, be, to be at these masses. That's the beauty of them. It, it's it's the, it's the house. It truly is a house of house of prayer. And it, the private mass is obviously a, a misnomer, because the mass is not private. <laughs> um, and and it, it's yeah, like people are there, right? But also Jesus is there. <laughs> I know uh, the saints are there, the angels are there, and you know there was an article I saw today. I didn't get to um, get all the specifics, but it, it said that ben, Pope Benedict. Um, before he was Pope, uh, when he was a Cardinal, was walking through an Abbey where all these private masses were being said by the monks. And he kind of waited around a while and, and prayed and knelt down and walked around. And, and then as he's walking out, he comments to the, the, um, the Abbot. He says, that's the Catholic Church. Simple I love, statement. I, love, I honestly love Pope <laughs> Simple <laughs> statement. So, yeah, so profound. Um, and in a sense, he's right. That is the Catholic Church. That, that is what is almost unique to the Western Catholic Church, is the idea of the private, the private mass. Mass is going on all the time. You know, we, we think about in our channel, how often did the earliest church celebrate the mass? Every day, daily. You know, that's something the Roman Catholics, that's a tradition the Roman Catholics continue on daily, daily, daily with the mass. Um, That's part of, that's part of the beauty of it. Well, you know, there's another part of this too. I I just can't stand that it's called a private mass. I hate, I hate that, that misnomer. Let's let's rename it right now. What should we name it? It should be like, yeah. um, Whatever. (laughs) (laughs) But else. you know what it should be called? The Pauline Mass. Because Paul, when he was shipwrecked with a bunch of Gentile, you know, non-believers, what was the first thing he did when he landed on the island? He celebrated the Eucharist with no other Christians. Well, yeah. Uh, um, it, it was on the ship itself, wasn't it? And he, and he, um, he took bread, blessed it, broke it, and it didn't say he gave it to them. He gave it to himself. You know, so he celebrated Eucharist for himself. <laughs> 
Dang it, Dan, you, you know, it, it, it's, you, I didn't remember that it was on the ship. <laughs> uh, right. Whatever. So Saint, I just know that St. Paul celebrated the Eucharist. I like that. We'll, I like that. We'll call it the Pauline Mass. Thank you. Okay. No, that, that was good. I saved it, but you, that was your idea. <laughs> All right. So anyway, here, here's the thing. I feel like this is just another symptom of what we said before, the Anglican virus. It, it, this is it, you know, and, and not to knock on Anglican, you know, also, you know, there's great, there's great virtues there, but it, it is this, this turning your churches, your sanctuaries, your temples into museums. Well, I have no problem knocking the Church of England. And that's what the Church of England has done. Yes. It has turned its churches into museums and circuses. And, there, you know, remember, what was that? Last year, they had a slide in the sanctuary of some, whatever. They have, like, art festivals inside their churches and all this stuff just to draw people in because nobody wants to go to their churches uh, because of how poor theologically they are now. Um, so, yeah, I don't have a problem. I don't have a problem with that. I'm with you too. I mean, like I'll, I'll criticize the Episcopalians all day long. It's just like, you know, the, the conservative Anglicans that I just want to like, you know, at least tip a, tip a hat to, you know? But well, yeah, it, no, yeah. I mean, we, we've, we, we've admitted before that it was due to Anglicanism that we regained our love for the church. Yeah. So, but, but, but the, the virus that infected Anglicanism, this academician faith, this academic faith that, that just loves like re revising and revisionism and like, you know, nuance and weaponized ambiguity and all these kinds of things. Weaponized ambiguity. Where'd you hear that term before? I like that. Gosh, dang it. Yeah. So I stole that. I stole that because it's beautiful. It comes from Patrick Coffin. <laughs> so it's from the Patrick Coffin show. He, he always says like weaponized ambiguity. I love that. It, it's so true because that's exactly what Anglicanism was infected with. Yeah. It just, yeah. So anyway, that's what it is. It's like now, so we're walking into St. Peter's and the Catholic traveler um, said this, you know, he's like, it's just the lights are off in these chapels. It's quiet. And all you hear is just the mutterings of tourists. Yeah. And it's like, stop making my father's house a marketplace. Yeah. This is a house of prayer, you know? Well, you know, when we think about the Jerusalem temple, you know, the high priest was going into the temple and doing his service yeah. uh, alone so by private, himself private sacrifice. behind the curtain. You know, was that a private mass? You know, of course not. Um, mm -hmm. there, it was being done on behalf of the people of Israel. That's right. Our priests are approaching the altar of God in our churches on behalf of new Israel. Yep. You no. Know? Yep. Just as the monks in the monasteries, you know, they're praying when the layman can't, you know, it's like when the layman can't make it to, to break the bread, the priest is still doing it. There's a comfort in that. That's the thing, you know, it's like, that's the thing about these, <laughs> that's the thing about these, these smarmy, you know, like liberal Catholic bishops and stuff where it's like, they just don't give a rip about, the faithful common Catholic. Well, that's, well, that's why we said it's, that's why we're saying it's a scandal. It's a scandal. It's, it's a scandal and, it, and it's actually elitist and it's clerical. It's clerical. The most clerical people you'll ever meet in your life are liberals, the, the liberal Catholics and the liberal. Ironically. Ironically. Yeah, the, the liberal, yeah, because they claim they're not, but they're the ones who force things down people's throats and they're the ones who take things away because they think they have the right to do it and they don't. You know, and this is a great example because it's a great comfort to me as a Catholic who's out there going to work every day, who had to sk skip morning prayer, you know, because he had an 8.30 a.m. conference call or whatever it is, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, it's a great comfort to me to know that Father Tom is saying the mass. And in fact, Father Tom would text me and say, your father-in-law, I'm saying mass for him today. Yeah, I mean, our parish priest for our viewers. Yeah, man. I mean, it's like that, that, Steve, is, that yeah. is the greatest comfort to me, you know, and, and to say that like, oh, this private mass is a scandal. It's like, who are you, man? I mean, before you were here, we had literally rows well, they're of not even, thousands of saints who did it. They're not even, they're not even, they're not even saying, it's, they're not saying anything. They're just that's saying it's been suppressed. Worse. Yeah, that, that's even worse. That's even worse. Um, it's just suppressed. 
So tell me again, how do you feel about liberal Catholicism? It's not a big deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I, I guess, I mean, we'll just continue to pray that it gets reinstated. Um, yeah, yeah, but I, 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 I really want to make this an invitation to to the Catholic traveler. I would love to have a conversation with him about this on our channel. I, we we really need to get to to flag him down, you know, because I would love to get more information. I know that he's he's been trying to get the word out, you know. And it's like as yeah. many mediums as possible to get to get the word out about this being a truly a scandal, and every Catholic should be outraged by it because again, it's making our father's house a marketplace rather and a museum rather than a house of prayer for all nations.